Welcome back to day 11 of the Australian Open 2020. Uh, in this video I'm going to be reviewing the two women's semi-finals that took place last night. Uh, kicking things off with Ashley Barty against Sophia Kennan. Obviously Ashley, Ashley Barty went to this tournament as well, number one. Uh, she was one of the outright favourites to win this tournament. I don't think she played outstanding in the first week, uh, whether she struggled with nerves um, and struggling with that pressure of being one of the favourites in her home country uh, might have played a part in that. Uh, but she she came through and she didn't play as I say she didn't play her best tennis in that first week. Uh, she had a couple of three set matches, but she did come through it in the end, uh, which is all that matters. She reached the business end of the slam, and in that quarter final against Kvitova, uh, she did really improve. She she lifted the level when she had to against a uh, against a top opponent. Um, a very close first set against Kvitova, but produced some excellent uh, tennis in that first set tie break before really dominating Kvitova in that second set. Uh, with the backing of the Melbourne crowd, and I think that win uh, arguably give Barty a um, massive confidence boost, knowing she could beat a top ten player. Uh, she was going on to face Sophia Kennan in the semi final, who has never reached a stage of a slam before. She's she's very young, uh, but I did say in the preview that I fancied Barty to win this one, but not to count Kennan out because she's got an outstanding attitude and she's a she's a real fighter. I think she's going to be a top player. Uh, moving on. A uh, quick look at Kennan coming into this tournament. It wasn't a player I'd seen a whole deal of. I, I watched I watched in a few tournaments last year, and I was very impressed there by her attitude and her, her defence and her all round game. Um, she she's had a good week. She had a very good week. Uh, first week, played Coco Goff in the fourth round. I thought she handled that situation uh, very very well. Obviously, all the pressure on her and all the fans with the Goff. She was the the top of the tournament after knocking out Osaka. But Kenan was the only really opponent that handled the situation, handled playing a fifteen year old on a on a big court. Um and she she beat golf with ease in the end and uh, really stamped her authority on that match uh, from the second set onwards. So you go on the what was it, semi final and it was always gonna be a, a thriller match, this one very close. And the first set was um it was a it was a top set, it was it was very very tight. There wasn't one break to serve. Uh, did go to a tie break, but both players seemed to be not passive but patient on each of the serves. They didn't take too many risks. They were happy to just hold serve, keep a high first serve percentage, and there was a lot of a lot of long rallies. Uh, there wasn't hardly any break points. To be honest, in the first set, both players were just very solid. They were they were doing the right things on serve, making the first serves, constructing points, taking control early in the rallies, and. The ground strokes uh, were very, very good. It was there wasn't many unforced errors in that first set, and it was difficult for either player to to get into each other's games. Um, I think the first set tiebreak was uh, the right outcome to decide a winner. Um, Bartley played some excellent tennis in the early stages of that tiebreak. Uh, went with serve again, uh, and at five four, Bartley uh, managed to nick a point off Kennan's serve, and she had two set points. Uh, was at that stage that. Um, I thought Barty was a little bit passive. I thought she could have done a little bit more with. It. She had a freedom of two match points, and she never really took advantage. She didn't go for it. You just think, you know, you you know, for, um, your first ever Australian Open semi final. Can you just go for? Uh, can you red line one ball? Can you, you know, one ball just sit up and you just smash it down the line? Yeah, but you can you go for it? Um, and she she never really done that and. She allowed Kennan back into the set. No credit to Kennan. Uh, I've said it all week about her determination and her fight and her attitude. And I think when you consider that she's just twenty one year old, she's never been in a in, in a semi final of a Grand Slam. Um, her performance this morning was quite outstanding. Really, it wasn't. As I say about Kennan, she might not be the most entertaining to watch. To watch, she doesn't have the uh, huge ground strokes of, of like some of the players do to her. She doesn't hit the most winners, but she makes up for that with a with the defence and her all round game and her an attitude and a fight. I mean many players in that first set up against well number one, two set points down, a twenty one year old and experience and a lot of players would have, you know, crumbled under that pressure but she fought back. She never she never sees defeat. She while she's in the set she always um she always fights and she always finds a way to come back and I thought her attitude and that first set tie break was was absolutely outstanding. I thought she she deserved it in the end. Um Coming back from from six four down to win at eight six, if that point on, I did think it was going to be tough for Barty to come back. I thought you'd have to take more risks. 
and taking risks and trying to hit lines against Kennan is a is a risky um, tactic. We all know good Kennan's first serve, but she doesn't uh, give you many break points at all. I don't think Barty managed to craft a single break point in, in that second set. Um, it was very early in the morning when I watched this match, so I could be wrong. Uh, but Kennan served uh, particularly well in that second set, and she really, she really took control on serve, and she was f- very confident and. I just felt like um, she wasn't going to let the match go from from an early stage. In that second set, you could see she was solid. She was really steely-eyed. She she knew a game plan. She knew it was working. And Bartley had to turn the match around. She had, she was the one that had to change it up. Uh, she knew as it you know if the match continued as it was going, then Kenan was going to run out of two sets and a winner. Uh, so Bartley, in fairness to her, she did start to take more risks. She tried to hit lines. Uh, it worked on the other occasion, you know, she got a couple of looks on the Kennan serve and she, she held serve well uh, a number of times Barty, but I think the errors did start to creep in as, as you know, the match went over two hours as well. Uh, it was a, like you might, well, around two hours, it was a very, it was a very physical match, it was a lot of long rallies, you know, there wasn't many short points, there wasn't many unforced errors, um, it, there was a lot of a lot of grueling points in that one. I think it took its toll on Barty towards the back end of that set. She was massively under pressure uh, with Kennan holding serve. Um, and she, the errors did start to creep in, which allowed Kennan to, to take the match 7 5. And what a tournament it's been for Ashley Barty. I'm sure she was massively disappointed to exit at this stage. Uh, she, I'm sure she, she thought herself that she could win this tournament uh, after reaching the semi finals. But all credit to Kennan, as I say, I think. What a what a player really! They're just as I say, twenty one year old. She's it's her first massive run at a Grand Slam, but I think she's going to be here about for years and years to come now, um, with that attitude and with that, uh, fight and heart that she's got, then that's going to get you so far in many many matches. Um, she never knows when she's beat. Her head never drops, and she just keeps rolling. She just keeps playing, play, keeps playing the game, keeps her on the defence. Um, being patient, forcing errors, doesn't make many unforced errors at all. A uh, single amount of unforced errors in either set. Um, when you consider they were both long sets, it's an, it's an incredible stat, that really. Uh, so she moves on to the final on Saturday for her first ever Grand Slam. Uh, Move on to the second semi final, and uh, I can safely say it was that first set between Halep and Muguruza was, I think, the, first, the best set of women's tennis I've ever seen. Uh, it was just such high quality. It was it was just an immense match. It was I got a bit around half four to UK time to watch it, and it was uh, fully worth it. Um, some of the st- uh, stats I might say I might be wrong because I was half asleep watching it, but it was uh, an out- outstanding, incredible match. Really, uh, Halep started as she as she always does, starting fast, serving well, uh, counter punch and defence. But Muguruza matched her all the way with the ground stroke. She hit the ball. So heavily today on both sides, she came out there bring, brimming with confidence. It, I thought a double-handed backhand on return today was was probably the shot of the match. A, a forehand looked brilliant all 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 day, and to stick with Halep and and really wear Halep down uh, takes some doing. It, it takes a monumental performance, and, and Muguruza absolutely produced that this morning. Uh, the set uh, went on serve for a long way. I mean, they both had looks in each other's serve, but. Mergruth and Halep served so well under pressure. Uh, they fought off many, many break points uh, before Mergruth uh, did eventually break Halep and she was served for the set at 6-3, uh, at 5-3, sorry. Uh, but Halep, in, in Halep fashion, she fought back. She she turned into um, robot mode where she just doesn't make an error. Uh, she she made every return of Mergruth serve and she made Mergruth try, try, try and out hit her to win that first set. Um, in Mugruth being the aggressor she is, she just went for it. She she saw the she saw the headlines and saw the um first set win, but that's a dangerous, dangerous play against Halep when you know how good her defence is. Uh, she put Mugruth under so much pressure and uh, did break it to get back at five five. Uh, went to her first set tie break and it had so many twists and turns, it was it was an unbelievable tie break. Uh, really did go all the way and I think Halep had a number of set points I think there was four set points in that tie break before she missed an easy ball I think on one of the tie breaks um, one of the set points Halep and that really seemed to throw her off um, Mugaruther got right back in it and eventually took it 8-6 I think it was or 9-7 um, let's have a look it was 10-8 actually I was wrong but 
yeah, ten eight, so it was uh, a super long tie break. Uh, but Mary Ruther uh, did eventually close that one out, and I think that was a huge, uh, huge first set. I think if you play over an hour in the first set of a, of a three set match, then it's it's going to take a uh, a massive toll on you mentally if you do lose it. Uh, Halep smashed a record uh, a couple of times after losing that first set, which is very unlike Halep. Um, but it's clear frustration. She she should have won that first set really, having four having four set points. But all credit to Muguruza. She stuck in there. She she kept she kept her game plan, and um, she she took a set point chance when it came. And that second set was was more of the same. Not many not many breaks to serve. It was just such high level. You had you know Halep running all over the court, getting balls back, but Muguruza was bullying her into the corners. Then Halep would come back with winners of her own and counter-punch, and it was brilliant net play, there was brilliant serving returns. It was just everything that you want in a tennis match there was. Uh, and it turned in 20-shot rallies, and uh, they just physically went at it. It was like a boxing match, really, at times. They were just blow for blow. Just It was absolutely an incredible match, and I think um, it deserved a third set. Uh, but... When Muguruza held for six five, uh, it was a very tasking tasking match, and I think uh, Muguruza seized the opportunity. She she saw Halep was not struggling physically, but they were both uh, getting sort of getting tired towards the back end of that second set. And when Halep didn't make many first serves in that six five game, I think Muguruza saw an opportunity. She didn't want another tie break. She just went for it, and the way she returned in that final game, uh, she was smacking. Uh, Halep's second serve for winners and putting Halep under a huge amount of pressure and uh, Muguruza did close it out to win 7-5 and what a win for the Spaniard you think when she's been off um, basically off the tour for two years more or less she, she hasn't done anything at Grand Slam she's dropped way down the rankings she come to this tournament unseeded without any expectation or hype around her to reach the final and get through Svitolina and Burton's and now Halep uh, Halep playing probably the best tennis of her career yet they lose a set in this tournament uh, what a what a what a performance from Muguruza to, to beat Halep in straight sets and I think she does go into that final as a favourite uh, would I write off Sophia Kennan absolutely not um, as I say it's going to be an outstanding an outstanding final but I do slightly favour Muguruza uh, because of a, a serve and a heavy ground stroke I mean just striking the ball so well and as we've seen in the past from Muguruza when she's in that relentless hitting form um, and her, her plan is really going and she's she's got that bomb of a serve and backs it up with the, with the one two punch then it's very very difficult for any, any woman in the world to defend against that I mean if, if Simona Halep can't win a set against her then who is you know it's going to take some doing to stop her but um We'll, we'll find out on Saturday. I will be bringing out a full preview of that match uh, tomorrow, yeah, Friday. So uh, tune back in for that one. But thanks for watching again. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow.